Hi, this is Paul Stolt from iPhone Dev TV, and here we are continuing the login screen. So this is part two. And what I'm going to do is work with these custom buttons. And we're going to go with uh, the custom button that we've created down here. I'm going to duplicate it, and then we're going to set up this screen. So let's go back to our interface file, and I'll show you what we're working on here. So this is the screen that we're trying to make. So I'm going to move the buttons down to the bottom of the iPhone screen add some extra controls and image view just so I can display some additional content and then we'll set up the background image. So let's delete these two. I'll just select them and press delete and then I'm going to copy the login so I can use the command C, command V and that will paste uh, another version of the button and here we can have um, a new user button or something like that. And so now if I were to run this right now, we'll stop it and run we will see that we have two buttons and they both use our custom graphics. Now the other thing I can do here is I can change some of the font attributes if I want to so I can play with the font size here. I can pick a different font if I want to and then here I get a lot of options. So maybe I want to try, let's see, do I have anything interesting? do this one. So uh, just a different look and, and this can make your app stand out a little bit. If you find a font or you embed a different font, you can just get a little bit of a different style for your application. So picking fonts is, is really up to you, um, but that will make it stand out from the standard apps that are out there. Especially if you're doing something like a game like that really can help with that type of thing. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how I'm going to lay out this interface and I believe I want to I want to do it for the iPhone 4. So I'm going to hit this button here to switch screens, which means I need to move these up a little bit. And we're going to start for the smaller layout just so that we can make sure that everything will fit on the screen. Now, I think I want a little bit more distance from the bottom. I'm not exactly certain. So I'm going to just move this stuff up here. And one of the other things I can do is I can add a a horizontal or a vertical guide. So if I add a vertical guide, that'll give me this type of guide. I can just drag it off to get rid of it. Or what I really want is a horizontal guide, which will allow me to position things vertically. So here I can put a guide down, and this is giving me the number of pixels from the bottom on that bottom number. So I'm going to let go here, and I'll just snap the button right there to the 40 pixel mark and, and hopefully we can work with that mark. Let's add another one. And I'll just try and snap that to the top of the button and then I'll add another one that will allow me to get 40 pixels away from that. So this might be easier if you're coming from Photoshop and you want to align things. So I, I left that one at 127, so I want to go up to 167. And we'll see if we can get that. And then here we're going to have some text fields, so I'm just going to drag two of those out and sort of align them here. Stretch them out a bit. I don't know exactly how big I want them, but something like that. And I'll, I'll move it to the side, and then I want two labels. And I'm going to center the labels through the, I like to go through the center, um, it's just my preference, so right about here, and then I'll put another one out. Now the first one's going to be our email, and the other one's going to be our password. So don't worry too much about the correct positioning. What I like to do here is then left align password. And since password is a longer one, I'll stretch out the field until I get to the edge mark right here. And then I let go. And that's the distance I'm going to look for. Now, you could either have email right here or you could back it up over here. So I haven't decided which one I like better. I'll just stick with this one for now. And so that is laid out. I want to add another horizontal guide, and we will put this right 
here. And what I could do, I don't need to add two. I could have just looked at the, the measurement here. So right here, I'm at 234 and I could just add 40 to that so that we can move up a little bit more. So that would be 274 and I can just place it here. So it's up to you how many of these grid lines you want to add. They can be useful for that initial pixel placement because you can snap objects to them. The last thing I want here is an image view. And I don't really know how big I want this. We might try just making it fill up this whole space on the iPhone 4. And then we'll have some extra space on the top or the bottom when we run it on the iPhone 5. And then I want to set this image. So I have an image on my desktop. I'm going to just drag that in. So here's a picture of Ro. This is my puppy. And I'll just plop it in there. Make sure it's added to the target. Copy into the folder so that when I share this with someone, all the files are contained within the Xcode folder. Now that we have that, I should be able to type where it says image on the right. So you should be on this tab. And if I start typing Ro, normally it would autocomplete, but it's not. I don't think it's actually saved, so let's resave. And there it is. So now we have our image. And I can play with the scale. So I want to do an aspect fit or an aspect fill to fill that entire area. And after we do that, and stop and run. And we see how the layout is looking. If you want to revise how it looks. You can, you can modify it. The last thing I want to do is I want to add that background image. So in order to do that, we're going to drag another image view out. And I'm going to resize it to fill this area. And now it's going to be covering everything up. So the way this works is it's, it's sort of like the painter's algorithm, which means that as you paint a picture, the, the paint that you throw down last is always going to be on top. And so that's the order this goes in. The, the buttons will be placed first and drawn, and then it's going to keep drawing stuff, and it's going to draw this image on top of everything. So it's going to be covering everything up. So what I need to do is I need to draw the background image. This is going to be our background image. And move it up one more. So I'll just rename this background image so it's very clear. And with that set, now we can grab that image also from my desktop. So I have a, another image that I made to fit the iPhone 5 screen, which is a little bit bigger than the 4 screen we're working with, but we will make it so that it, it stretches appropriately. And once we do that, I'll just save here, and hopefully that will allow me to select the background image, and then we should be able to see our background here. So now I have that. Now I can't see email and password anymore, so I'll have to change the font color. And let's go with a white color, just so they stand out. So that's a little customization for your login screen. Now this isn't completely finished, but this is a starting point. You now have a way to set a background image. And as you can see, if I were to rotate the device, we don't have any auto layout constraints set up, so that's something else we'll have to add. And when we switch over to the iPhone 4, so if I hit this button, you're going to see white space appears along the bottom. Um, but that's not really a good indication of how it's actually going to look. We actually have to select the iPhone Retina 4 inch, and we can run it and see how it looks here. And we should see white stuff along the bottom, and we do. And so the next step will be making sure that our interface sort of centers itself and then stretches out. And so that will be another video.